Now, Vicki, teachers report they don't have time to do it, but really they are observing and monitoring all the time in a teaching situation. Isn't that right? That's right. They naturally collect data. As we teach, we are always observing, we're watching students, listening to their responses, but it is not our habit to write down what we see. We just think we'll remember it. Is it necessary for teachers to write down everything? Yes, because we have so much going on. We won't remember some of these specific data points that will really help us make decisions about grouping or teaching or selecting materials or monitoring their progress. There's an easy way to chart these observations when we're working with students, especially in small group. You just keep a clipboard with mailing labels and you put the date of your observation and the student's name or initials on the label and you just make a positively stated comment about what you see. These suggestions will help you focus your observations and record your comments. Write the purpose of your observation on the first mailing label. That will keep you focused and tell you what to look for that day. Then determine which students will be observed and print their name, one on each label, and then add the date of your observation. Then write your comment on each label about what you see or you hear that you want to remember that will inform your teaching or your selection of practice activities. Then later when you have time, you will peel off individual labels and stick them on a piece of copy paper that's kept in the student's mailbox or portfolio. And we'll use those mailing label comments to then group students for instruction, plan teaching, plan practice activities, or monitor students' progress. What are the advantages of informal assessments for teachers and students? Using the mailing labels to collect informal assessment data is wonderful for teachers, but it's also wonderful for students. It helps the teacher understand and remember the information for planning instruction. But for students, when you walk to a student, lay that clipboard down and you ask that student, what do you need? What is it that I can help you with? It focuses on them and they enjoy the attention. Why don't you tell us your story, your personal story? Oh, one summer I was working with a group of students and we didn't know much information because it was a summer program, we didn't get their files. And we were walking and making notes and observing so that we could plan instruction. And a young boy said, teacher, teacher, I need help with those times. And I don't mean those numbers on a clock. And what he meant, he was telling me, is he needed help with multiplication facts. So the opportunity of going to them individually and asking them what their needs are, they get used to that kind of attention and they will begin to tell you what to write. They will tell you what their needs are. 